I ever wondered how to get buttery smooth time lapses like this or like this. Time lapses are a great tool to show motion and the passing of time. It's a view people aren't used to see, so it's also a good way to impress your viewer. Now, let me show you how. First, let's talk about equipment. In general, you can do time lapses with any camera, even with your phone, as long as you can take full menu control. Most modern cameras have a built-in intervalometer. Man, what a word. <laughs> if your camera doesn't, you can buy an external intervalometer, which is not expensive. Next, you'll need a tripod, like this one or a gorilla pot like uh, this one will do the trick as well. Depending on the time of the day, you'll need a ND filter to reduce the amount of light hitting your sensor, so you can extend the exposure time per image. This will help to smooth out the time lapse. Well, that's already all the equipment you will need. Next, let's find the right location. Most important, find a place where a lot of motion happens, like traffic jams, rush hour in the metro, a fairground, moving clouds, and so on. What I found doesn't work well is water along a riverbank or like small trees in the wind. Things which are moving quickly back and forth make a hectic and edgy impression. As soon as you find a good place, look for a nice composition. Find leading lines, framing, a foreground, rule of thirds, and so on. Now. Let's set up the camera. Set your camera to manual mode or to aperture priority if you have changing light conditions, for example during sunset. Fix your ISO at the lowest possible setting and also set your white balance to a fixed value. Also switch off your image stabilization and of course shoot in RAW. With the help of your aperture and the ND filter aim for a shutter speed of at least 1 50th of a second. It depends a bit on how fast the motion is in your images. For traffic it might be enough to get motion blur, for people I'd rather aim for a 1 quarter second or a half second. Now we set up the interval. If our video timeline has 24 frames per second, we will need at least 240 images for a 10 second sequence. The interval depends a bit on the speed of the objects in your images. So for fast moving objects, I take an interval of 1 second, for slow moving objects like clouds I take 2 seconds. Next, set up a delay of 2 seconds before the recording starts. Now set up your camera on the tripod and let the camera do its job. Depending on your interval settings, it'll take up to 10 minutes until it's done. Now as you have all the images in your storage, let's import the images into Lightroom and start the basic raw editing. Alright, now we are in Adobe Lightroom. I already imported 250 images from night time lapse I shot in New York City. And now we'll just do a basic raw conversion. Uh, I'll do that very quickly and I will see you in a second. Alright, now that's it, my basic uh, raw conversion. Now just for the settings of my camera, I uh, already talked about it before. So I shot it on a, a focal length of 24 millimeter, uh, ISO at 100, the lowest possible, uh, aperture at uh, f5.6 and exposure time is about one second. So we get this nice light streaks and the people are a little bit smoothed out and not, and not too sharp. Uh, as you can see, I didn't do a lot of color correction because I want to keep that for my entire movie later on so I can adjust the uh, color grade between the time lapse to the remaining clips of my video. And also didn't do that much of a sharpening and also not a lot of clarity and even reduce a little bit the structure because the images are a lot sharper than the video itself. So it fits a lot better if it's not too sharp and the clarity is not too high. And then I mark all images and then I go back to my settings and synchronize my settings. And now I synchronize all images. Okay, now all images are synchronized and then we can go to export. The quality is at a 100%. That looks all perfect. Good. So now I will hit the export button and the images will be exported. 
finally the images are exported from Lightroom and I opened up a new project in Premiere Pro and uh, I will add first of all a sequence and I will adjust it according to my sequence settings I have in my New York video so it's in 4k and I shot it in 24 frames per second rig 709 that's all good let's call it time-lapse NYC and now I will make a new bin edited images right so now I will take all my edited images into this bin okay before we can start to edit our time lapse have a really quick look inside our settings window I'm not a hundred percent sure how this is called in English so it's basically the cut window I guess and what we want to look for now is the um, length of one of one image, basically. So it's important that uh, one image is exactly one frame. That's very important. Now that we have done that, let's have a quick look that our images are in the correct order. So we just make sure that the numbers are okay that looks good and now we can pull them in all right let's have a look at the first image and we can zoom a little bit out so the image builds our frame like this and that's all we gotta do for the moment we press copy we mark all the clips just remove the first one and right click and paste attributes click all that click ok and now all images have the same size okay now we can mark again all clips then a right click and now we will nest all images so again we call it time lapse nyc we hit ok and now we have a nested sequence next thing you can still have a look if you have like a little bit of jitter and some movement um, here it looks quite good because it was a um, steady soil steady underground so that was not a problem otherwise if uh, you have some jitter in there you can go to effects and take your warp stabilizer uh, actually, in German it's Verkrümmungsstabilisierung, what a nice name. <laughs> and we put it on there, uh, usually something around 10% is nice. And then you have to wait until it's finished. I won't wait for that because for me it was okay and I don't need it in that case. One more thing I want to do, because it's really steady, uh, I want to add some movement. So we hit the watch for our position and scale and we will zoom a little bit in, move a little bit to the left, a little bit down, okay, like this. And then we go right to the end of the clip here, zoom a little bit more in, maybe like this and move to the right and a little bit up like this all to the end like this i mean it all depends how it suits or how it fits into your video sequence uh, and to your remaining clips you have in your um in your whole video but uh, just as an example this is how you can add a little bit of movement. So it feels a little bit like the camera is tilting upwards, turning to the right. So we have a little bit more, a little bit more movement in this. Okay, that's basically it. And now you can use this nested sequence and put it into your video sequence, or you just go to export media and you can export your video. Nice, that looks awesome. 
No, that's already it. Of course, it's a little bit of effort to create time lapses, but it improves your production value quite a lot. I usually add time lapses to every travel video I do. Now, I hope you found some value in this video and learned something new. So far, see you in the next one. Bye bye.